Pacific Railway, two bands of steel that pass through the most spectacular scenery on the face of the earth. From the Atlantic to the Pacific, a mighty link in the chain of transportation stretching from Europe to the Orient. The Northwest Passage of today. The building of this modern railroad is synonymous with the building of a nation, the Dominion of Canada. In the early 80s, Canada was uncertain of a future as a united country. British Columbia, isolated beyond vast mountain ranges, threatened secession. Only a railway could link this far western province to the Dominion. Explorers penetrated into the mountains, scaled rocky peaks and fought their way through roaring gorges. The government spent millions of dollars in survey. Regions of breathless beauty were discovered and mapped. But the great barrier, the Rocky Mountains, kept locked within its vast silence the one secret which would make this railway possible, a pass through which a railroad could be built. A crisis arose. Workmen laid down their tools. Progress ceased. Supplies lay unused on the prairies. And the rails came to an end. A special committee of the Canadian Parliament was forced to meet in an emergency session. The entire project was fired from the beginning. An attempt to put a railroad through these mountains was a dream born of insanity. There is no practical route. There never was one. And needless to say, there never will be. The member from Ontario. Mountains are not all. There are human obstacles, too. Settlers in the West, Indians, all threatening to burst this railroad bubble. There will be bloodshed. Men will be killed. Homes will be burned. The gentleman from British Columbia. British Columbia is at the end of its patience. We've had our fill of excuses. We are isolated behind these mountains that you rant about. I warn you, gentlemen, unless we get a railway, British Columbia will become a separate dominion. We shall succeed. No. I think our guests can clarify the situation, if given the chance to speak. And I'm quite sure when you've heard what he has to say, you'll have a different opinion of the whole project. May I introduce Mr. William Van Horn, General Manager of the Canadian Pacific Railway. There are things that some men can do that others can't. Your job is running a government. Mine is building railroads. But since we both have a deep interest in the Canadian Pacific, perhaps we'd better get aboard the same train. I concede the many obstacles, both human and geographical, that lie ahead. We expect to bridge them as they come up. I'm no miracle man. I'm just a plain railroad constructionist who can run into a dead end like anybody else. But in this case, this railroad is going to be completed. Mr. Van Horn, may I request a direct answer? Can the mountains be crossed, and how? If Hannibal crossed the Alps, we can cross the Rockies. The how of your question I leave to be answered by one man alone. He is a surveyor, gentlemen, and well known on the frontier. At this very moment, he's mapping a route through the heart of the Rockies. I promise you, that man will find a pass.
Kirk Clark around? No. You say when he'd be around here next? No. Something to do with skins? Yeah, his. It's good to see you. I knew they couldn't build a railroad without you. <laughs> I thought they laid the Northern Pacific on your chest for keeps. They did, but when they started pushing that iron into civilization, it got too tame. So I just sneezed it off and came up here to Canada. Tom, my boy, the times we're going to have on this line, eh? Uh -uh. I'm getting this railroad off my chest right now. You're quitting before you start? Mm -hmm. What have you got cornered that's more important than building a railroad, huh? You'll never guess. But you can't do this to me, Tom. Think of all the good fights you're gonna miss. You're getting soft, that's what... Mike, where'd this bird come from? Well, I hired him this morning. Why, what's he done? What he might do, throw him out of camp. You know him that well. All right, Kegel, see the timekeeper and get your pay. Let me throw, please. You heard Brannigan on your feet. Hit the breeze. Just a moment. That man's hurt. If he isn't, he's going to be. Move out. Get your sympathy from Dirk Rourke. I'm a doctor. You're a doctor? Yeah, that's right. What sort of a man are you? I saw the whole thing. You attacked this man without giving him a chance. Yes, ma'am. I don't know what your differences are, but I'm certain they could have been settled without bloodshed. You can see, Mr. Brannigan, that hiring vicious, hot-tempered hands such as this... This person can only bring trouble to the camp and make the inefficiency. Well, now, wait a minute. Do you know who this I man... I can't help it, Doc. Viciousness was just born in me. Every time I see a dodo in a red shirt, I go crazy. <laughs> Tom, what's it all about? What'd you sock that fella on the bees of her? And who's this Dirk Rourke? Strictly a personal matter, Dynamite. How long has she been around here? Came in with a hospital car. Myself, I don't trust no saw bones without whiskers. It depends on how bad you feel. I can see there's gonna be a lot of sick men around here from now on. Yeah. Too bad you ain't gonna be around to head the parade, huh? Ottawa, Mr. Van Horn. They want to know, do you intend to... Yes, I heard them. Stall them again. Send this. Now with advanced survey, Everything under control. Well, hello. So you're back. I'm back. You're three days late. You're lucky I'm here at all. I'm lucky. Ottawa again, sir. They're ordering me to send a man on horse after you. Hiding, Mr. Van Horn? Hey, look here, you flat-footed mountain goat. I've been lying for three days, lying on account of you to the president, the directors, Ottawa, and even to myself. And you come lumbering in here to say, hello, so pretty. Would you care to join me in a cup of tea? I'll admit I was slightly delayed, but then I wasn't exactly sitting in a private railroad car. Well, all right. What did you get? What route do we take? This survey, you understand, incurred large personal expenses. I presume my account will be paid. The route, man, the route. That's rough country. I've seen so much white water, I'm blind. What are you stalling for? Don't tell me you didn't find a path. Yes, I found the pass. You'll tunnel and bridge plenty before you're through, and you'll have to meet yourself more than once coming back. But there's your gateway to the Pacific, and you can make it. I've marked sites and a rough idea of the grades. Little white lies, Lord forgive me. 
I'll draw maps and detail the route before I leave. Tell them we found the answer. Tell them my personal surveyor, Mr. Tom Andrews, has found the pass. Add uh, all previously proposed routes untenable. On what? Until, well, just say out. So, uh, what do you mean, leave? I said it as soon as the maps are finished, so am I. Oh, no, you're not. You're going to see this job through to the end. Some other railroad, maybe. Your personal surveyor note was very touching. But I've had enough railroading for a while. I've got another project west of Calgary, made the date last year. You're a bigger liar than I am. I don't have to lie, I've got a date. And what's more, I'm through skinning my knuckles over other people's fights. From now on, I'm a man of peace. Peace. Any more talk like that, and I'll have you examined. Pardon us, Mr. Van Horn. Yeah. We made a list of additional medical supplies we need. I'd like you to see it. Oh, I'll go over it later with you, Doctor. Oh, by the way, I want you to meet Tom Andrews, Dr. Mason, and Dr. Edith Cabot, his assistant. They make up our hospital corps. Well, Tom Andrews, I feel I already know you. Mr. Van Horn's done so much bragging about you. Glad to meet you, sir. Dr. Cabot? So you're the famous surveyor? Well, a little more than that. I'm Mr. Van Horn's personal famous surveyor. I'm sure that was meant to be funny, but I'm very dull at hidden jokes. Oh, he isn't funny, Edith. Some say he's the best surveyor and the best trouble boss in railroading. I don't know why, but he's definitely not funny. Well, what is a trouble boss? He has to be quick with his fists and quick with a gun. A lot of riffraff and troublemakers infiltrate the construction camps. It takes a good man to find them out and get rid of them. You're right, Doctor. I break them apart, you put them back together. I agree with you, Mr. Van Horn. He's not very funny. But I can believe that you do your job thoroughly. Only I don't agree that violence is a solution of violence. You've seen a lot of it, I suppose. I've had experience on the frontiers of my father. Dr. Mason was his partner then. My father was killed, Mr. Andrews, because he tried to use a gun against a man instead of reasoning with him. If he hadn't worn a gun, he'd still be alive. I'm sorry about your father. I've learned, though, that in this country, if I draw faster, I keep living. Force never settles anything. It only brings on more resentment and more gunplay. What would you suggest, my dear? I'd keep gunmen out of railroad camps. Thank you, Doctor. You've more than convinced me I was right in a slight argument I had with Mr. Van Horn. There's no place here for a man like me. Thanks so much, Doctor. You're welcome. We'll be back later with the lists. You're an idiot talking to her like that. She's a good doctor and a fine young woman. Beautiful and cracked. You know that stuff won't work. Well, if you know it, why are you quitting? Look, I've just done a job, a big one. I'm taking a holiday. Oh, a holiday. I thought it was going to be a project. Well, Mr. Tom Andrews, a woman at last. Sure it is. A human one, not a stuffed halo. Good luck with your railroad, and when you pass west of Calgary, toot your whistle. Toot, toot. Welcome back, Mr. 
Dr. Andrews. How are you, Mama Gautier? Why, you're prettier than ever. Prettier than any girl I've seen lately. Mama, you blush. Oh, I'll get supper. <laughs> I better give Steele his rub down. What girls have you seen lately? Oh, lots of them. Over in British Columbia, I met the cutest little, little squaw, four feet high and four feet wide. Oh, you're joking. For that, I... <laughs> oh, Tom. You say that now, but someday you'll miss the railroad and you'll be gone again. Oh, no. All the Royal Northwest Mounties couldn't drag me back. They are better surveying jobs and hanging by my eyelids over some mountain gorge. I'm so happy I could cry. Papa says I almost went cross-eyed. I, I watched that trail so closely for you to come back. <laughs> Where's your father? Oh, we hurried off to some meeting. Oh. Did you see our lake again, the one you told me about? I sure did, and it's more beautiful than the first time I saw it. Now they call it uh, Lake Louise. You know, uh, it might be a little rough for a honeymoon. Wild country, cougars, bears. I wouldn't be afraid of anything in the whole world with you. You know something, Cecile? I don't believe you would. I uh, gave you this. Tonight you said, Tom, being married to you, nothing could be more wonderful. You'll change your tune. I'll have you waiting on me hand and foot, just like a squaw. Oh, no, you won't. But that Dirk Rourke would have. When we're married, he'll stop hanging around here, I'll bet. Dirk Rourke? Uh huh. He has one of his trading posts near here, you know. But he just uses it as an excuse to see Papa, he says. Has he bothered you again? I told him straight, just that once. That was enough. <laughs> oh, you should have seen his face when I told him I was going to marry you. He would have killed you, I guess, if you'd been around. He didn't forget about it. He took some pot shots at me up in that canyon. No. I figured it was on account of you. If Papa knew that, he wouldn't have gone to that meeting of Dirk's. Rooks holding that meeting? Something about the railroad, I don't know what. Where is this meeting? At the trading post barn. Tom, I swear, Dirk never bothered me, only that once. But he bothered me plenty. Don't go. Stay away from him. There'll be dozens of them at the meeting. All the better. Please stay here, Tom. After all this time away. They'll be shooting. Your temper is quick. So is Dirk's. Don't go and get hurt, Tom. Maybe I'll be just as well off without guns. I want to talk to those people. I want them to know I'm here to stay. It'd be safer without these. They'll mob him. Dirk Rourke will see to that. They'll kill him. I tell you, the railroad means the end of free life and open country for all of you. The country is ours. Let's keep it. Maybe the railroad won't get through. They say the work has stopped. The they railroad is going through, and I can prove it. You remember Tom Andrews, who was here last year and left? Yeah. You know him, Gaucher. But of course, he's the way my daughter. Yes. He made a fool of you like everybody else. Maybe you'll change your mind about him when you hear what I have to tell you. Friends, there is one pass in the mountains through which a railroad can be built. I've long known about it, but kept it secret for the good of all of you. But now Tom Andrews has found it. I saw him there only last week, taking sights. That man is a surveyor for the railroad. He never told me that. He ought to be bull with clear to Winnipeg. Why don't you tell the rest of it, Rourke? About sneaking up and trying to put a bullet in my back. But I'll take that matter up with you later. I came here to tell you where I stand. I intend to stay here. Get married. I like the country. I like the people. I want to be one of you. But if you're going to swallow everything Rourke's been telling you, then maybe that'll all be changed. I don't want to have to wear a gun every time I poke my nose outdoors. Don't change the subject. 
Are you going to say you didn't find a pass for the railway? No, because I did. If I hadn't, somebody else would have. Sure, the railroad's going through. Nobody can stop that. And naturally, things won't be the same. But Rock's wrong about the harm it's going to do. The railroads will bring you a lot of good you never had before. You won't be living in the backwoods anymore. You'll be a part of the world. That's all lies. You were sent here by the railway to spy on you, to cheat you. I quit the railroad. And if I'm going to live here, I've got as much interest in what the railroad's going to do to this country as you have. And I say you've got to stop the railroad. Men, men, for the sake of your families, for the sake of your homes, don't start anything you won't be able to finish. We'll finish it. You want to lose everything you ever had? My only interest is in you. Your only interest, Dirk, is in that string of rock trading posts. Because those big profits you've been taking from these people will go out of the window. Trappers won't have to sell their furs to you anymore. They can ship them direct. And the same for any of you farmers and settlers. You are the only man here who will suffer by the railroad. Ask him if it isn't so that the railroad will bring people. Hundreds and hundreds of people who will trap the furs that belong to you. Cut up your land and steal them from you. There's the man you can thank for the food that will be taken from your children's mouths. I promised myself, Rook, I'd pin your ears together. him. The railroad again. Yes, sir. Yes. You're misguided or ill-advised in holding these meetings. They can lead only to trouble for everyone. Now, I suggest you go to your homes and think this thing over carefully. Yes, yes sir. Tom, I'd like a word with you. Yes. Look after Rose. Yes, sir. That's why we don't want the railroad because we Great Dirk Rourke will never forgive you. The end of a warm friendship. This is the first chance I've had to welcome you home. Cecile told me she was expecting you. She says you've uh, quit the railroad. The railhead's no place to take a wife. Did you know I was leaving for the head of steel tomorrow? No. Why? Mr. Van Horn sent for me. He felt my presence there might have an effect on the men. I wonder where he could have got that idea. You saw tonight what Dirk Rourke is starting. The unrest is growing. It could lead to very serious trouble. Yes. I only hope we can find some way to stop it peacefully before it goes too far. Well, good night. Good night, Paula. Oh, Tom. Would you be good enough to give that to Cecile? She dropped it in my study tonight. Good. Thank you. I waited up for you. Good. What happened at the meeting? Worked out all right at the end. Why, were you afraid? No, certainly not. Oh, it was lonely out here waiting for you. Chilly. But I couldn't go in the house until you came. You dropped this at Pale Lacombe's when you sent him to look after me. Well, anyway, you came back whole. And now you can have a rest and 
go to our lake. Cecile, something happened that changed things. Our lake will have to wait. I'm going back to the railroad camp tomorrow. Oh, no, Tom. Just tonight, you I know, said... but I've left a job unfinished. If trouble comes, I've got to be there. It isn't your fight. It is my fight. That's all anyone ever talks about anymore. Isn't there anything else in the whole world but the railroad? Yes. There's you. There's me. And yet you'll leave me to go back to it. Just for another year at the most. Try to understand. I understand. I waited one year, and now you want another. And then you'll want another. No. Oh, maybe Dirk Wark was right. All that railroad can bring is unhappiness. That's all it's brought me so far. My people don't want it, and neither do I. And I don't want you either. Taking a lively interest in things. Well, I got to thinking, where would you be without your personal surveyor? Legs up. Clear the track. Clear the track. Prep. Track progress has been almost too smooth. No disturbances in or out of camp, not even a smashed finger. At this rate, we'll hit the pass before winter. Let's hope. Anyway, I'll still keep my eyes open. It just isn't natural, Tom. Well, I've got to be rolling up the line. trying to do blow up everybody these horses are valuable man was i glad to see you back when you rode in this morning even the horses was happy fine but dynamite go easy with that stuff the men are not used to it the way you are listen i've been trying to get you alone all day i think this was the best way of doing it oh. what's on your mind i've been losing some dynamite night before last half a box last night a whole box see anybody tracks all around the magazine moccasins engine but, Tom, engines don't usually savvy dynamite. Who knows about this? Just you and me so far. Well, keep it quiet. Maybe I can get a line on where it's going. See you later. Chief. Oh. Oh. Two men there that don't walk like Indians at all. They walk like white men. White man got sharp eyes. Maybe you better shut eyes tight. Leave those two here and take your men back to your camp. You again. I might have guessed. Yes, Doctor. Until this. Until you came back, we've had no trouble. Now it's the rule of a gun. Shoot me. Fire me. It wouldn't done to your kindly brain, would it, Doctor, that I could have had a reason for shooting these men? There's your reason. 
to Calgary and hold them for murder. I, uh... place you got here. Hi, Sam Twenty. Yeah, when we get to the mountains, I'll have to have two tents. Hey, uh, play with that stuff some other time. How much is missing now? Dang near a thousand sticks. A hundred and eight sticks to a case makes almost ten cases, enough to blow the whole work camp to Timbuktu and everybody with it. How about the men you've had working here? Two of them run off. But not the pair you plugged the other day. Tom, you disappointed me. Why, when I was a deputy down in the hole in the wall territory, I... You were a judge the last time you told it. I used to shoot once per man, that was it. Them two you clipped was only weak. I'm trying new tactics. Yeah, I know. I know, digging up business for that female sawbones, huh? Well, you was a good man once. And when a fella like you starts going soft, take long before he shakes like jelly. All right, I'm quivering. Now listen, I'm gonna borrow your wagon. What for? I've been doing a little scouting. Oh? Uh -huh. Tonight, take my horse, tie him into the horse lines where everybody can see him. Take your bedroll into my tent. Light the lantern, sit and read, if you can. Can? Say, when I was at Harvard... I, I... thought it was Yale. Well, the university. All right, then read. The idea is to make it look like I'm home. Why can't I be in on this, Tom, no matter what it is? It's a one-man job. Mostly argument, Indians. Hmm? Why, when I was with the Indian Bureau... Don't you go fooling with none of them spores. Winnie, now where was I? Better start all over. by white men to steal dynamite. Those white men, not your friends. They don't tell you truth. Come with me.
Okay. What did they think? I saw it. We see this not happen again. Thank you, Chief. Unhitch these horses and tie them up. No way. He's like a sitting duck. I know, but hold it. This will be good. Of that. Make sure. And why he wasn't killed. One of the funny peculiarities of dynamite men was too close. Six feet further away, he'd have been blown to bits. I didn't know that. Better wait till we get to the base hospital, Edith. He shouldn't attempt a transfusion now. He needs blood. Otherwise, he won't live to get to an operating room. I can remind you. It may be fatal. That kind of man would ask to take the gamble. Come on. Stir around for a few minutes. Will you live now, ma'am? I mean, doctor. Do you know how to pray?
settlers in my valley are with us to a man, almost. There's nothing wrong with that. Good work. Every medis I know will be ready when they're needed. They're smart people. The railroad's as good as stopped right now. Good. How dare you hold a meeting in this house? There will be many meetings in this house. It is my wish, and it is my house. Then you're in deeper than I thought. I've just made your father one of my chief lieutenants of SEAL. Sit down, you'll learn something. Thank you, Dirk Rock. I'll stand. All right. We're just getting organized for action. With winter coming, we're going to have to stop on the road anyway, so that gives us plenty of time. I just come back from their camp. They ain't going to get to the pass before snow like the planned. Some accidents they had held them back just enough. Sure. It only takes a couple of sticks of dynamite to blow up a culvert and hold up the work for days. When you get back, tell the rest of our friends working there to remember that. I come spring, I've thought of some new things that'll stir up those work crews so they won't be able to get down a mile of track a day. Pass me that jug, Cagle. We're going to drink to Van Horn's downfall. Starting next week, I'm going out to talk to the Indians. Indians? Yes. Before winter's over, we'll have every tribe between here and Vancouver beating the war drum. Wrecking only slows down the road. A big uprising will end it, for good. Uh, you first, Papa Goche. <clears throat> I drink to Dirk Rock. You won't drink to him here. Cecile, leave the room. You're crazy men, all of you. You can't stop the railroad. You listen to his lies so that you can all get killed. There's nothing wrong with the railroad. I rode on the trains when I went to school in Montreal. They are wonderful. They bring a civilization. Stop. Stop, I tell you. You are a matis. You will think the way we do. You will do what we do. But you're wrong. You turn against your own people? Then we're through with you. You're no longer one of us. Go think it over. The choice is yours. Pass the jug again, Kegel. Cecile. I talked to your father. Just tell him you're sorry and he's ready to forget it. I guess you still got your mind on Tom Andrews. You wouldn't talk that way. <laughs> you sounded just like him. Tom Andrews is gone. Sure he's gone. He was only playing with you anyway. There was a female doctor up at the railhead he was really in love with. Liar. <laughs> That's why he went back to the job. Liar. Liar. Liar! She's nursing him right now at the base hospital. If he's still alive. I'm sick. What happened, Dirk? Tell me the truth. All right. Bullard hit a case of dynamite with more on top. Been better if I killed him on the spot because he's going to die anyway. So I guess you'll have to forget about him. He was never your kind. I'll do more for you in one minute than he'll do in a... How do you know about a bullet? You know. You know because you fired. No, Cecile, I didn't you fire. You did, you did. I know you did. You're not. You're not. Did you liar? Did you? No. Did you? No. Cecile. I, I know you did. I don't know how he did it, Dynamite. He's hung by a thread for days. But there's definite improvement now. He lived. Sure, sure. I know he would all along. He's made of cast iron, that fella. I want him to sleep. From now on, nature will do the doctoring. It's a miracle. If you haven't left his side for five minutes since he got hurt, the miracle is you. Can yes, you tell me where? Right back in number six. But let's you Tom, come back there. Quiet, you can't go in there. 
I must see him. I'm going now, in. wait a minute, Miss. You can't go in there. Guess you're Cecile Gaucher told me about. I'm Tom's friend, Dynamite Dawson. Yes. Is he? Yes, he's going to be all right. Now, don't you worry. Then why can't I see him? Because he's a sick man. No one can see him for a long time. You see him. All the time. Miss, you just can't go back in there. Who does she think she is? He isn't just a patient to her. Please, no. She won't let me in because she's afraid. She wants it for herself. Look, Miss, why don't you use some good common horse sense? I've got to tell Tom something he must know. God darn it, you stay here. Let's go! Anything you got to tell Tom, you can tell me. He said you was a wild one. Come on. Sit down there, you stop boiling now. Now, what was it Tom should know? Dirk Rourke fired a bullet into that dynamite that hurt Tom. I'm sure it was he. I'll be dog it. He's got the medics organized to stop the railroad. And he's got plans for the spring. I don't know what they are. I stood up against them, but... Dirty snakes in the woodpile. I thought I could stay here and help in some way. I guess you still like that Tom Andrews, don't you? What does that matter now? Matters a heap. You gotta go home quick. For Tom's sake and your own good health. Why, if you was to walk out on your people now, you'd be a traitor. It might even kill you. You know what's going on. And if you want to help Tom and the rest of us, play in with the medis. Find out what you can. Yeah. Don't you worry none about that lady, Doctor. She ain't fed him no love potion yet. Somebody's been pulling spikes again. Look, why, if this work train had hit that loose rail... Any more dynamiting? Not in the last few days. You know, they knocked out the guard and raided the magazine again, so anything can happen. Has that powder monkey Dawson come back yet? Nobody's seen him since he left base camp two weeks ago. Just about licks us for the season. All right, men, let's clean it up. Come on, back to work. Back to work. Weeks behind schedule. Sabotage has delayed supplies. Cost more than we can afford. Payroll car hasn't been getting through on time either. And that's about the surest way there is to start unrest among the men. Wish I could be there. When does work stop? Oh, any day now from the looks of the weather. Well, one thing. It'll give us a chance to reorganize and give you all winter to think up a way to stop that sabotage. I got a couple of personal accounts to take care of, too. We'll lick them. We've got to. Edith tells me you'll be as good as new by spring. Fine woman, Edith. If she hadn't given you her blood on the train that night, but then that's over, so I talk about it. She gave me a transfusion? I thought you knew. Well, she did, and it saved your life. Goodbye, Tom. Oh! How do, Mr. Van Horn? Where have you been the last few weeks? Me, I... Oh, I've been away. Private business. You see, my poor grandma broke her leg down in Spokane. Had to set it myself. Big job. Yeah, there's a big job at the rail camp, too, which won't be yours if you don't get back to it.
How you feeling, old pal? Worse looking at you. What's all this rigmarole you were giving Ben? Oh, I didn't want to tell him what I was really doing. Tom, did you ever try to figure out how that dynamite got set off? I keep imagining I heard a rifle crack just a split second before the big bust. Well, you ain't imagining. I think I know who done it. Dirk Rourke. How'd you find out? Oh, been doing some detecting work. Matter of fact, I've been on Rock's trail, followed him clean through the mountains. I figured I'd get him for what he did to you. You shot him? No, God darn it, I couldn't catch up to the dog. You keep out of it, Dynamite. If Rock's behind all this, I'm the one to settle with him. He's behind it, all right. The whole blasted thing. And he's got a bushel full of new plans cooking in his skillet, too. Looks like we're going to have our hands full come spring. Yeah, it sure looks bad. Guess I better hop them cars to the railhead or I won't be around next spring. Take care of yourself, Tom. Hmm? Thanks for dropping in and cheering me up. Oh, that's it. Those men didn't disturb you with any distressing news. No, everything's fine. I'll change these today. Don't you ever treat your patients as anything other than laboratory specimens? Well, I don't seem to follow you. I heard about that blood transfusion you gave me. Why didn't you tell me? It didn't seem important. I would have done the same for anybody. Well, the important thing is you did it for me. Now that I have your blood, doesn't that give us something in common? Certainly not. You know, Edith, you better start to warm up because we're going to be snowbound here a long, long time. feel fine. Sit down. Thanks. I've only got a minute. I want you out to the camp just as soon as you feel you're up to it. Uh, what's happened? Well, we started up again all right. But it's worse than ever. Not from the outside, though. It's all in the camp. Dissension. Men won't work. Payroll again, huh? Money all tied up in legal tape. I'm going to Calgary to untangle it. Promises aren't going to satisfy those men any longer. They've always had a lot of respect for you, Tom. If you could only get out there for a few days and keep them quiet, I could straighten out the money thing. Edith, what have you done to yourself? Just combing my hair differently. It's an improvement. A vast improvement. <laughs> <laughs> Went to the frontiers before he lost his appreciation of the finer things. That's the man I've learned to admire and respect. Not the Tom Andrews I met wearing clothes. I was just cleaning them. Do you think I ever wanted to use them? But you did use them. There are times when a man There's never an excuse for drawing a gun against another man. And if you feel toward me the way I believe you do, you'll never wear them again. Never. Well. They are kind of heavy, and I'm not as strong as I used to be. I knew you wouldn't turn back. Now you're my patient again, so listen. The hospital car is moving back to the rail ends tomorrow. Fits right in with my plan. Uh-uh. Convalescence and post-surgical stay here. And that means you. 
but I've got to get back. The doctor says no. You need at least another week's rest. I'll miss you, Tom, but it won't be long. Anything you say, doctor. But are you sure you can't use poor old Buffalo Bill? They're not even to think of such things. of all hospital rooms. No. All I need is fresh air and excitement. We still have a hospital, you know. And I can make you stay right here. Well, I can keep my eye on you. I guess I'm anxious to get back to work. Come on down and help me check equipment. Coming. Now, sit right there. Here. Twenty dozen pads, Major Up. Major who? Made you operate it. Check it here. And I say no, warriors! No! The iron monster will swallow your land. You've seen the buffalo go. Soon the land itself will disappear. Get your people together and drive this thing from the country. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Didn't I tell you the truth? The upset that rail camp's in now, we'll grip him without lifting one of our fingers. Good, good. We'll drive out the thieves. Everything's going better than I thought. I got whiskey pouring into that camp of the barrel. Got a gambling place, too. Them rust eaters want to quit work and have a little fun. There it is, right in their own yard. <laughs> Those bucks will pick them off like flies off a of bull moose. We're ready now. Thousands of bucks waiting in the hills and bush. It started. That fool of a father of yours. He doesn't know what he's helping to bring on us. It'll be our blood that will be spilled too. As well as the railroad people. Stay in the house. Papa, can't you understand? You must make Doc Rock stop them. No, it's right. I thought you had come back to us. Well, one of us. I was. Now this. What do you think those people would do to you if you told them that? It belongs to your tribe. You own it. It is yours. Then speak to them. See how they listen to you. People. My daughter wants to tell you of her love for the railroad. Go ahead. Tell them. Destroy the railroad. Drive it from our land. We met us tie with you to the death. Warriors, go now. Go back to your tribes. You have your orders. You have to get gone. You must be proud of me now. Yes. I saw and heard. What he did was terrible. Yes. I'm going to Tom while there's still a chance. He must know. But he's no longer your man. He has somebody else. You see? Yes! Somebody his own kind who isn't a part of that. But it makes no difference. I must warn you. Uh, 
Once you leave here, there's no turning back. You can never return to the Metis again. Still in Calgary. Where's our pay, Andrews? Now, what can you spend your money for out here? Mr. Van Horn promised you your money. Well, we've had promises. And you're going to get it in a day or two. Yeah, we ain't going to listen to that either. I don't blame you men for driving. I would, too, if I were burning up muscle all day long and getting nothing for it. I'd never lie to any of you men. Most of you know that. And when I say the money is on its way, you can stop worrying. Ah, uh, more promises. They're all lies. Let's smash the work. Hey, put it up. Get out of here, slugging, Tom. Yeah. Come on. Tom, wh what are you waiting for? The cost of that will come out of your pay. Now, let's get back to where you can cut out this horseplay. We got a railroad to build. Ha, <laughs> tough guy. <laughs> There's your big trouble, boss. His pants all pressed nice and neat. <laughs> Don't even wear his guns no more. What's the matter, Andrews? You lost your nerve? Come on, man. We're going over to Bailey. Come on, man. <laughs> man, getting this track down is more important than personal fighting. You did all you could do, Tom. I could have shoved my fist right through his teeth. Tom, what in thunderations happened to you? Nothing. Here, you got no gun. Go after that no good ruckus razor and hit him over the head with it. Times have changed. What's that female done to you, huh? Tom, you know you can't handle them bullheads with no kid gloves? Maybe I can.
paid for five barrels of whiskey and they sent me ten, so drink up. Kill them! <laughs> Tell them the truth, Bailey. Tell them the whiskey was donated free by our friend. Get your mouth, I told you. Ah, this is a slick one. You heard what John Muller said. The booze was sent to keep fools drunk and cripple the railroad. Ah, shut, shut up. up. I've got no use for the record. just got plugged. Think he's going to kick the bucket. I must go. Edith, wait. But Bailey's just murdered Scotty McNair. You can't go over there like that. you got to have those, you know. is dead. Go back to the car. You, Bailey? Yeah. We're closing up. <laughs> no need to get riled up, Andrews. Excitement's all over. He was just about to hold a wake for poor old Malice. Join us in a drink? We're going to take a walk. I'm turning you in for killing Scotty McNair. You've got it once, Andrews. Next time's the last. <laughs> you wanted a wake? Well, Neil. Dynamite, get their guns. So there won't be any more shooting. I'll keep these guns for a while. After you men have sobered up, I want you to think about what you've seen here tonight. I'm going to talk to you again in the morning, and this time you'll listen. Slack out. Yes, yes, I got all the slack out. Well, Danny, Tom, I could do it better my way. And blow up the whole countryside? Oh, no. You ready, Jim? Anytime. You ready? Give me the steam. Take her away. Right. Jim, you're going back to the base tonight? Right away. If you see Mr. Van Horn, tell him what happened and say everything's under control. All clear, Dynamite? All clear. Cable's off. Night, Tom. Night, Jim. Dynamite, we're in business. We just opened a saloon. 
I saw a sign one time in a saloon in Montana that read, if you want to know who's boss here, start something. <laughs> well, I'm not the boss, and I'm not here to start anything. But somebody else has already started things, and they don't intend stopping until these rails are a tangled pile of rust. Everything that's happened, these accidents, Bailey's, are all part of a scheme to put us all out of jobs. Are we going to give in to that? Or are we going to finish what we came out here to do, build a railroad? Well, if what you said about the pay car coming is so, ah, uh, let's lay steel. Tom's right. Nobody's going to take my job away from me. No. That's the spirit, men. That's the spirit. Now, I'll tell you something else. There's one man behind all this grief we've had, and I know who he is. If you men will go back to work, I'll go out and find this fella, drag him in by the heels, dead or alive, and let you have a look at him. Who is this snake? Let's go get him. Yeah. Come on. Wait a, minute. Wait a minute. He's not that easy to find. Besides, it's a personal matter. But once he's nailed, our troubles will be over. It'll be smooth rolling from then on. So what do you say, men? Come on! Tom, maybe ain't no politician, but you ought to be. <laughs> hey, wait! They're coming right now. Angels, what did they tell you? They got rifles. There are hundreds of them. Dirk Rock got them crazy. You've got to get away from here. Well, there's no possible way. We have no engine. Then have Pere Lacombe go to them. He can talk to them, make them understand. All of Lacombe's still back at the base. Listen. Men, you heard. It looks like we've got to make a stand for it. Come on, let's move that hospital car in here. All right, let's move it. You could pick. I don't care. I I couldn't let them. I know you're a brave woman. Tom, I just drums. They're louder. Thanks, 
sniper and fish in the tub. Sight. We'll keep him boxed in the dark, and then I'll give you the signal when to cut loose. What about the fellow that rode out of here a while ago? He won't get very far. I've got Indian outposts watching every trail. Just in case somebody does get away. Want to play games, eh? Well, just as to see which one lifts my scalp, eh? Well, you're plumb uncivilized, that's what you are, you. Say, Chief, you mind if I smoke? Savvy, last smoke before you lift the hair? Don't you skew. You boys want to smoke, too? Well, we got lots of let's be sociable. There's one for you. Here's some for all of you. Finest smokes you ever had. Give us a light, Chief. There you be. Yeah, this is a good one. You like these, boys. Just prep away there. Get a light from another one. Mm. I don't like it. Anything can happen. Tell some of your men to get inside the car, the others underneath it, but under no circumstances let any of them get outside this barricade. Pass the word along. He's a wounded man. I said they were treacherous. Come on, then. Help me get him out of here. Open the door, somebody. There we go. All right. You can ease the pain of our own men first. Humanity never takes sides. But you brought this trouble on. Violence always breeds more violence. You mean to say you blame me? Oh, not personally, of course not. I blame the things for which you stand. I thought you changed. But it takes great courage not to kill and to shed blood. We got a medic here. Winged him running across the rocks out there. Papa! Cecile, no one told me you had come to him. I didn't know it would be so horrible. Horrible. I was wrong. Wrong? What's Rock's plan? He's up there. 
by the big dead pine tree. When he sets the torch to us, that will be the signal for the last attack. There are too many for you to fight. Light her up, Kegel. Stop that, Kegel! Stop the signal, but the dog's dead. You killed him. Why shouldn't he kill him? You've seen what he's done to us. I'm glad, Tom. I'm glad. You've been hurt. <laughs>
mister? How do you like building railroads? As your personal surveyor, I sometimes think you do it the hard way, but I like it. Tear the coat. Mr. Van Horn, dynamite deserves some credit. By the way, what kept you? Well, as a matter of fact, I stopped off to have a smoke with some engines. Dang fools, smoke their heads off. <laughs> Money's the root of all evil. Partner, you can just give me a carload of them roots. Your father will be all right, Cecile. Don't worry. You're not riding back with us? I'll bring her with me in the next trip. You'll need all your roots. Well. In heaven's name, what is this? Well, if that ain't trouble. What is it you want? No, I know you came out there. Honey, the way to know came out. Nine, I've been to a hurry, more. Um, down, who you hung in now? Hey, now, who are you going to arm here? What did he say? They want to have peace with the white men. They want to return to their homes unmolested, free to roam the forests, and never fight again. Tell them their wish has been granted. The white chief gives you the freedom to do all that you have asked. I'm asking you to believe me. Not as a priest, but as a white man who understands the white man's way. The white men are not all evil. Some are, just as some of your people are. Listen to the tongue of one who is dead.